Gary, welcome to FICA World. I really appreciate you being here with us to talk about human collaboration with artificial intelligence. Um, one of the questions I had for you, which is a question you probably get asked very, very often, is about the, the rematch you had with uh, Deep Blue uh, in terms of the, the famous chess match. And, you know, I remember that day very, very, very clearly right, as, as, a, as a researcher at that time with artificial intelligence and wondering what that meant. Well, was that a point where we would see a change in terms of what the capabilities of artificial intelligence would be? And I, I'd like to get your insights around, you know, what that meant to you, but also what does that mean 20 years later as we see, you know, the industry moving forward? Obviously, uh, the rematch in 1997 was a watershed moment because mm, machine was capable of winning a normal classical chess game, a match actually of six games against uh, 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 current world champion. The irony is that contrary to the expectations of the founding fathers of computer science, Alan Turing, Lord Shannon, Norbert Wiener, the machine that succeeded in defeating world champion was not a machine that as they expected would be emulating human mind. Mm -hmm. It was brute force. I'm always resisting Deep Blue being called intelligent machine. It was as intelligent as your alarm clock, mm -hmm. but it was very fast. 200 million positions per second. It was at that time a triumph of parallel processors, of this pyramid of parallel processors that IBM succeeded to put together and, and, and uh, um, had a maximum, uh, at the time, maximum um, output. Um, but what we learned in 1997 was that for a machine to um, be superior in the game of chess or in any other game, or now understanding any closed system, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to make less mistakes than human opponent. And even the best humans are poised to make mistakes. We're vulnerable, so that's, that's, that's our nature. Yeah. And uh, um, what I learned after that match is that it would be useless to compete for just uh, for a long period of time. They were, objectively speaking, analyzing um, the games of the match, and today you can do it with your uh, uh, mobile phone. The free chess app on your mobile phone is stronger than the blue, thanks yeah. to the Moore's Law. Um, w objectively, I think I was stronger, but it doesn't matter whether I was stronger, having mm, higher ratings, uh, rating or being a better player. It's about you playing the very, the, the, this very game, this very match, and how you can control your, uh, uh, your nerves. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, I saw that, immediately saw an opportunity for us working together. Because I also recognized that uh, that would be, that in chess, we would have unique opportunity to find out the best ways of collaboration. Because we could bring together uh, human intuition, uh, human fantasy, uh, human judgment and machines brute force of calculation.